Hello quilting friends, I'm so happy to greet you today, this wonderful sunny Sunday. Uh, and I have something very exciting for you today. Well, not so far ago, I came back from a quilt show where I taught classes and I found out that you had a huge demand on how to quilt feathers. Feathers, the very classic element and everybody loves doing them and many people do struggle thinking how to start, where to start, how to follow. So, um, just getting back to your demand, we just created a new template, which you can use to quilt feathers. And as you can see, it has three different sizes, three different shapes, like loopy loops, that for sure will be your feathers. And you can play with variety of sizes. I think it's it's wonderful. Here you can see a feather I've just made. I, I'm just playing with that. It's not perfect, but I'm learning. You know that I free motion better than <laughs> work with rulers. So here you can see that on this side, it's like bottom for me, but it's top side for you. I used the same size of this little teardrop shape. And here I decided to play with different sides to create more movement and natural look. One more advantage of my template, my ruler, is that it's extra large. I always tell people that you should have more space for safety and just to hold it better. So you have more space here to place your hand safely without risking to be sewn through by your machine. Here on top I have a curvy line which helps you create that beautiful curvy stem. How to do that? You just mark it with your favorite marker or a chalk. Then you flip it over and continue as long as curvy as you need. Later we will be building the loops following this stem. So now I would just like to show you how it works. Let's draw a simple straight line for ourselves to make it simple at the beginning. Here on the ruler, on a template, you can see a guideline. This little line that helps you hold everything in place and a little line here so it shows you the bottom point where you can stop and start quilting the loop so that should be your very very last point you don't want to travel down because it will break your shape so how I quilt that I basically line up this little guideline with a stem I've just made for myself as a guideline too and here remember that your foot will take away a quarter of an inch from this side and from this side so you want to position the ruler that way that the line goes kind of in the center in the middle of the space what we're going to do now so I line up this line with my step stem I leave this line in the middle and then I go and create my first shape I travel back stop here move my ruler up until I meet with the edge so I continue and quilt one more shape here I stop here on the stem I move my ruler up and create one more shape and we just continue doing that should we try so first let's start with a simple feather we draw a straight line which is going to be our stem and what i'm going to do i'm going to line up this little line in here with stem every time i quilt a shape Please pay attention that your stem should be here between these two edges so you're, you will be sure 
that your foot will be here on a stem and won't be wonky and the feathers will follow one another. Okay, let's start with this simple one. First, line up it here, put it in the center, and we create our first loop. Now I'm going to travel up and stop here, maybe in the middle of this shape and start another little shape. So if you make sure that you hold your ruler straight and still and don't move it around, you will be able to repeat your previous stitching beautifully. So now I leave my machine here in this pos position and just slide my template up. Okay, keep your needle down for better control. Again, make sure this line is lined up with the stem. The stem is in between these two edges. And let's quilt until our needle touches the stem. Stop, slide it up, line up the little line, the stem in between. You may keep like telling it to yourself until you get comfortable with that. And now I'll be stitching until my needle touches the previous shape. And back. Stop, slide, line up, touch the stem, slide and line up. Let's stop here. So you can see if you follow these steps you will end up with a very even straight feather that will look nice um, on a sashing or a simple border or any other section so if you would like to make this one just flip the template over and you will have the right shape going to the right direction so you do the same thing you line it up here in a center here and just continue repeating the steps I've just showed you. But there is one more way how to make your feathers look more playful and less straight. So just don't keep in mind that you line this little line with your stem, but every time try to change the angle of it so it really helps you understand what angle you're following. So the more different you get it, the more wonky and playful your feathers will be. So let's try another side of the stem quilting playful shapes. Here I just have to keep in mind that my stem goes in between. So I will start and end at the same nice point. Let's try it out. Okay, I just ran out of thread so I just changed my bobbing. Let's start over again. I <coughs> don't line up this little line with my step anymore. stem anymore. I'm playing with the angle which helps me create a playful, interesting shape of feathers. And let's go and quilt another one. And now I change the angle again. And slide it up. And slide it up and change the angle. And again.
like everything, <laughs> it requires some practice. But you can see that when you're changing the angle of the template, it doesn't look that even and straight anymore, but looks happier. So next, let's try a curvy stem. And uh, maybe one side we would do one size of shapes and another side we will do different. So let's see how it works out. <laughs> 